Today we're going to review what you already learned about lists and we're going to talk a lot more about accessing elements and the other way that you can traverse a list. Let's just review what is a list. Remember that it is the fundamental mechanism in Python for collecting multiple values. That means it's a container that stores a collection of values or elements. It can store more than one value, which is very useful. These values are called elements, and they are stored in sequential order. So when you put in the first one, it stays the first one, the second one. They stay in order when you add them to the list. The list can grow or shrink in size, so it's not a set size. It can, the size is flexible. And it can store any data. It can have integers, floats, strings, booleans. It can even have a list of lists. But whatever you do store in it should be related. So I shouldn't have a list that is an integer, and then a float, and then a string, and then a boolean. It should all be related data. To create a list, you give it a name, and you use the square brackets. The square brackets are going to be on the other side of the equal sign. So when I use the square brackets like this, it creates a list. It can either be empty or with data, but the square brackets separated by an equal sign creates a list. I add elements by using the append method. Okay, remember our method uses the dot notation with my object, which is my list in front, the method, and then whatever I'm going to be appending. Now we also learned how to access elements by using the square brackets, but in this instance it's called a subscript. Each element in a list stays in order. It is sequential, but you can change the order. You learned about that with sort. It still has an order. Each element has an integer position called an index. So if I did change the sequence, then the elements are still there. They just get a new index. But everything has a position, and that position is identified by an index, which is an integer. To access a list element, use the subscript operator. So the square brackets are called the subscript operator. It's not going to be separated by an equals. So I have my list name, and then I have the square bracket right away. Inside the square bracket, it cannot be empty. It has to have the index number. So this index number refers to a value. And it gets a little bit tricky when you first get used to it. And that's how we're going to do some time practicing. So I've got my index, and I've got the actual value itself. So here, I've got my list is my array, my list. I'm going to access what's an index 5 and the value is 10. So it's actually the sixth element in the list, and the value is 10. Now sometimes I need to take the value out, and I can still access it by using the index. So this statement looks at the fourth value, my list index 3, which is the fourth value. Whatever value is stored there is going to get assigned to number. So both of these examples access an element using the index. But the index isn't the actual value. It's just telling you the position. In our first lecture, we learned that there are two ways you can traverse a list. Remember, traversing means to go and access each element in order. The two ways are by index or by element. Now we learned in our first example how to just do it by element. And this is really handy whenever you want to access every element and you don't need to know the index. I'm just going to go every one, like printing. It's a perfect example. If I'm searching for something, I can just search through the whole list and see if I find it. Now this works many times, but sometimes I do need to traverse the list by index because the index could matter. I need to know the position. So to, to traverse a list by index, I'm still going to use a for loop and the count variable in my for loop, so I do for count or for x equals for i, that count variable is going to be the index. It's the index reference. When you're doing this, make sure that you do not go out of range. And the easiest way to do this is to use the length function, len, of the index. It's always going to tell me how many elements there are. So if I have 10 elements, the len will be 10, and I would do 0 to 9. So it's kind of built in. Use the len function to give me the length, 
When I use that for the range, it's always going to go up to but not include that number. So here's an example. I'm using I. I is kind of like short for index. For I in range, and instead of putting a number here because I want to be careful that I don't have an out of range error, I'm going to take the length of my list and I'm going to go up to it but not include it. Now I'm going to print my list and I have to use the subscript operator and I is going to stand in for my index. So it's like when I had four elements in my list, here I have for I, it's my index, I'm going to start at zero, I'm going to go up to. So it's going to take the first element, which is zero, and it's going to print the value. Then it's going to go to the next one, one, and print the value. So it's not printing I, it's printing the value, that's the position, and it's printing the value stored at that location in my list. Now, this can be handy if I actually want to print the index. So I want to say which element I'm printing and print the element. So I can, it comes in pretty handy. I can print I, so it's going to start with 0 and what's in the 0 position. It's going to print 1 and what's in the first position. So let's take an example in Python of actually accessing elements in a list. I'm going to go through a program, start with some basics like your review, and then I'm going to add in a couple of elements where I might want to access elements in the list and use the index kind of like a counter. So you can follow along with me if you'd like. I do recommend it. Or you can just watch. It's going to be up to you. So here we are in Python. I've already got a program started. So let's just kind of look at what I've got here. I've got a function to fill my list. And I want to be descriptive with the name. So I've called my list numbers. I'm going to fill it with numbers entered from the user. So instead of generating random numbers this time, I'm going to get some numbers from the user. So I've got a prompt here that I'm turning into an integer. Enter a number from 1 to 10 or 0 to quit. So I'm going to let them enter as many numbers as they want, and I'm going to do some things with it. So I do have kind of like a condition here, similar to what you're going to do with your bowling scores. I want to make sure that the number is in the range. I said 1 to 10, so it needs to be greater than 0, and it can be less than or equal to 10. If it is in this range, I'm going to append the number to my list and I'm going to ask for another one. So if you kind of recall back to what we were doing in chapter four with while loops, this would be my priming read. And this would be my modification read. There are other ways to do it. So if you want to do it um, without the priming modification read, you can, but you do have to have a read inside your loop and then a, a way to exit. So this is similar to what we've done before, but this time I'm just using an indefinite loop. I've got my function for printing, and this is like we've been doing it. So I've got four element in numbers. Numbers is my list. I'm printing it and I'm keeping on the same line, and I've got my print. And then I've got my main function. So I've declared my list. And then I'm filling it and I'm printing it. Let's just run this. I'm going to put in just a few numbers. And I quit right there, so there are my numbers. Okay, simple. Everything works so far. Let's start by changing this, traversing my list by using it by index instead of by element. So I'm going to need a variable for my counter, and I'm going to use i like I've done before in the example. And I'm going to say in range. And then for my range, since my list can be different uh, length, I'm going to use the len or length function. So no matter how big my list is, I'm going to use that as my range. It's going to start at zero and go up to it. Now here, I'm going to change instead of printing element. I need to access the element at the index. So I'm going to have numbers, which is my list, use the subscript operator, and i for the index. So I'm not using element anymore. Numbers i actually refers to the element. I'm just being pretty specific. And I'm going to print it. Now when I run this, everything should work just the same. So I'm going to put in some numbers again. And there we go. So you didn't notice a difference. It did the exact same thing. Just the first time we did it by element and the second time we did it by index. So it, it just looks a little bit different. 
and you can't really mix them up or you're going to get an error message. So be careful, you know, stay consistent with whichever way you're going to do it. Now instead of printing them across, I'm going to take out this and I'm going to print them going down. Okay. And let's kind of throw in that I want to print the index with the number. So I'm going to modify this by doing one, the I. So I'm going to print which index it is or which position and the actual value. Okay, and there it is. Now it's kind of squishy together, but you can see the first element, which is the index zero, is five, and the second index, second number, which is index one, is one, and so on and so forth. So here's my index, and here's the value stored at that position. I want to space it out a little bit and make it easy to read. So I'm just going to put in some space. And then I might put in like a column heading. So here, just before I call fill list, I'm going to add a print statement. And this is going to be the position or index. I actually can say index. And then I'm going to follow that by um, value. I don't know if I have the spacing quite right. We'll find out when I run it. Okay. So you see index and value. And I've got maybe, I'm going to put in a little more space in here. That should make it look really good. It looks great. So this is one reason why you might want to use by index instead is that you can say the, the position as well as the value. Now this program is not very interesting so far. So what I'm going to do is add in a second list and I'm going to call it counters. I'm going to use the index as a counter to tell me how many times numbers get entered. So I'm going to ask the user to enter numbers from 1 to 10 and hopefully they'll do a lot of numbers and in the end I'm going to tell them which number they entered the most often. So this I'm going to keep numbers as just storing the values. I'm going to have a second list that's going to count each number when I enter it. So I've got counters right here and I'm going to fill it with some numbers and it's going to be different from this one because this one's getting numbers from the user. I want this counters just to start out with a whole bunch of zeros. because I don't have anything to count yet. Now I also know that it's going to be from 1 to 10. So I'm going to need an index for 1 up to 10. I'm going to have an index for 0, but I'm just going to basically ignore it because the user's not going to enter any 0. So I'm actually going to do a different fill list for my counter. Let's go ahead and put that up here. I'm going to call it fill counters list. I'm just going to pass in counters. And I do know the size. It's going to be, I need to go up to 10, which means I actually have to go to 11 in my for loop. So for i in range, I'm going to put 11 because I need to go up to 10. And so I'm going to take my counters and I'm going to append, spell correctly, 0. I'm just going to fill it with zeros. And this shouldn't give me any errors. I need to call it. I put this in the wrong place. I'm just going to put this right before I print it instead. So I'm going to fill my counters. And I'm going to fill my list and everything else should work fine. So you're not going to see my counters list, but I should be able to run it without getting any error messages. So it did fill the list, but wouldn't it be good if I could see it? I can do another function to print the counters list just like I did a different one for fill, but really I'm doing the exact same thing 
as for the counters as I did for the numbers. It's really kind of silly to do two different functions that do the exact same thing. So instead, I can modify this print list. I'm just going to make my list name really generic. I'm just going to call it the list. And then it could be either numbers or counters. So your parameter does not have to be the same name as the argument getting passed into it. It can be something really general. So you can see that I just replaced numbers everywhere here with the list. So whichever one it is, I can use it. Here I'm, I'm calling print list with numbers. Let's call print list with counters. I don't have to make any changes in my arguments. I don't have to make a change in the call. I've simply changed the parameter name. So when I, when I do this function call, numbers gets passed into the list. And when I do this function call, counters gets passed into the list. So it should work either way. So I did it with one, two, and three. And here's my list. Okay, now I might want to add in a column heading for the second one. And this is going to be um, the numbers. And it's going to be the number of times it was typed in. So how many times did I enter each number? I really am never going to enter zero. I'm including it now. But I can make some more modifications. Like I could add another parameter to this where I have the beginning value, whether it's going to be zero or whether it's going to be one. So I want you to think about that. Let's just run it again. Okay. Now I haven't done any counting yet, so this list is not very interesting. It stayed zeros. Now I'm going to make another modification to this program where I actually do increment. Remember, these zeros are going to be counters. So every time I enter the number 2, I want to come to this index and increment its counter. If I enter the number 7, I'm going to come to this index and increment the counter. It's really a fairly simple thing to do when you're accessing elements because I'm going to be accessing them by index. I'm going to come up here to where I'm filling my list, and not only am I, am I going to pass in numbers as a parameter, but also counters. I've already filled the list, and now I want to increment the counter. So every time I append a number, I want to increment that counter. Okay, so this is where you have to really kind of think it through. Am I talking about a value or a position? So the number that's entered is going to become the position of the counter I want to increment. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to go to counters and I'm going to use my subscript operator for num because the number that they entered is going to be the index and I'm going to increment. So plus equals one. We'll just take a good look at this and see what we've done. It's because it's not going to seem very intuitive. You think well index is a number, the user is entering a number. And whatever number they enter, so if they entered 5, I'm going to come to this counter, and I'm going to increment. And I'm going to do that for every valid number. Now, this part is pretty important, that I've got a good conditions going on here, because I do not want to have an out-of-range error. So if they entered 11, it should not even come into this while loop and try and increment at 11, because you see I do not have an index 11. Okay, let's try this. Okay, now I got the error here because I added two parameters, but when I called it, I only used one argument. So let's make sure that everything matches up. And now I'm going to start entering some numbers. I'm going to enter some numbers more than one time. And now I'm going to enter my zero. So I entered how many numbers? Not 12, but 13. Okay. From 0 to 12. And then you can see that I entered two ones, two twos, one three, one five, one six, five eighths, and a nine. So these were counting how many times I entered this number. I used the number for my index, 
and this is a counter. So it's kind of a different way of using a list. I have a list for just keeping track, and I have a list for counters. So this is two ways that you can use a list. They're both pretty handy. I haven't told you which number was entered the most yet. So we're going to do one more function. We're going to call it the results. First thing I want to do in results is just tell you how many numbers got entered. Because this can be a little bit deceiving. And what if I entered like 50? It's going to scroll off the screen and I won't really always see it. And I don't have to print the index. I could just print the values. So I'm going to add in a function for results. I don't need the numbers. I only need the counters. So I'm going to have one parameter, counters. But if I do want to print the number entered, I will, I'll go ahead and supply both of them. Because this way, I can print how many numbers were entered. So my first statement, I'm just going to do a print. And I'm going to say um, numbers entered. And this is the length of my first list. So I'm going to use len numbers. That should tell me how many numbers got entered. So here, even though the index is 12, the length is 13. Now I want to find out which number was entered the most. And what if I entered more than one? Like here I just have 8 as 5 times. What if I entered two of numbers 5 times? So I can't have more than one number entered the max number of times. The first thing to do is find out what's the max of my counters because that's going to be the number entered the most. We know how to do that by using a function. So I'm going to say hi, or let's call it most because it's the number entered the most equals max of counters. You've got two lists, so make sure you're keeping them straight, which one you care about, and I care about the counters. Now I'm going to traverse my list. I'm going to check each value. I'm actually going to check um, each counter and see if it equals the most. If it does, I want to print it. So I'm going to traverse the list. So I'm going to do something kind of like this. I'm going to have my for i in range. And this time I'm going to traverse the counter. So len counters. And I'm just going to compare. Whatever is at this position is the value the most. Okay. So if I've got counters at this position, equals equals most. So I'm going to be checking. So if the one at 1 is the most, or the one at 2 is the most, I'm just going to go through and look at each counter until I find the most. And when I find it, I want to be able to print the index. Okay? So if it is the most, I'm going to print i. Why am I not printing most? Because most is just the max. I want to print the index, which, which number had that many counts. And what if there's more than one? I'm going to put a comma there so more than one can be printed. And then I have to end, of course, with a print statement. I might want to put a print statement on top of this just to say print um, number entered most. And then use my comma so it's going to stay on this line. Let's call our results. And then if I've got two parameters, make sure that your arguments are in the same order. Okay, so let's just put in a lot of numbers. Okay, so it says I enter 20 numbers. You can see this is right. I have 0 through 19. And here's the, all the different counts. And it looks like 6 was counted the most. And I come down here, sure enough, the number entered most was 6. So this shows you a couple of new things. First of all, using the index to traverse a list. And that it can be a handy thing. You can use it for a couple of different things. Here I used it. Uh, in a way, I used it 
to fill a list with zeros. It's not quite using the index, but similar. I um, used it here to print, and I used it here to just do a search. So the subscript operator will help us. You remember, this is the position and the value. It's going to give me the i is the position, and the whole thing put together is the value. So what was stored at that position it takes a little bit of getting used to. So I'm going to give you a program to practice. For this program, you're going to simulate simulate doing uh, rolling a die. Now remember, a die has six sides, so that you're going to be getting a random number between one and six. So you're going to simulate that you're rolling the die, getting a number between one and six. You want to keep track of the numbers, and then at the end, you want to tell me which ro which number was rolled the most. And you can ask them in advance how many rolls are you going to do. Are you going to do five rolls, ten rolls, a hundred rolls, a thousand rolls? And so you can use just a regular for loop. You don't have to use an indefinite loop for this. And otherwise, it's going to be fairly similar. Let's run my program and just see how it works. I do have an introduction. Okay, this program will simulate the rolling of a dice many times and then tell you which number is rolled the most often. So how many dice? Let's just start off with 50. Okay, and here it's finished. Um, there was 50 rolls, and here it's giving me my counters. How many times did it roll the number one? How many times it rolled the number two? How many times it rolled the number three? The number four? The number five? And then there's six. So in this roll, or in this one time, this, the, it's not the sum, but the number rolled the most often was six. So play again. This is a simple thing that for you to be able to do in your main. Let's try it again. And let's time, let's try a thousand rolls. So this was run number two for me. And I did a thousand rolls. And you can see the numbers right here. And once again, the sum roll most often was, or the die roll most often was six. Let's play it again. Let's do 5,000. And this time, two was most often. And you can see that this was try number three. So I just threw in a few extra kind of little counter things here. Your task is to do the basics of the program, generate the rolling of the die, and using as another list to count how many times each one was done and print the results. And of course, it'd be great if you add in this extra loop and anything else that you can think of to make the program special just for you. And that is your assignment the dice roll program.